Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to talk about the design system library or playlist that uh, a lot of people or a lot of you guys have requested me to do. Uh, but just a few disclaimers even before I begin. And this is an introduction video of what I would be covering in that course. So definitely let me know if there's anything you would like to add. But first of all, I'd just like to let you know what a design system is. So this is coming directly from Envision that a design system is a collection of reusable components guided by clear standards that can be assembled together to build any number of applications. Now, this particular definition may not necessarily be all encompassing of the different uh, ideas people have about design system but what i want to focus what i want you to focus on it's guided by clear standards so everybody understands that a design system must necessarily contain the ui components required by the application or the product that you're creating the design system for but it has to be guided there has to be some philosophy or principles behind it that dictate what that particular or what the particular component set is going to look like which is exactly why i have the second question here about the difference between a design system and a style guide or a pattern library. So a design system isn't only a collection of the assets and components you use to build a digital product. That's not what it is, or that's not only what it is. Um, and according to <clears throat> Emmett Connolly, director of product design at Intercom, most design systems are really just pattern libraries. And that's exactly what I would be doing in this course. I would be creating a pattern library. I'm using the term design system because obviously a lot of people are familiar with it, but just a disclaimer that this course is going to be particularly about the pattern library portion of the, of the design system, because we're not necessarily creating this design system or pattern library for an organization, for a product, so on and so forth. We don't know the requirements of that product. We don't know the users of that product. So we can't really figure out what the methodology is going to be behind that particular design system. And again, that's not going to be part of this course. Why? Because the purpose of this course is to teach you or to equip you with skills within Figma to go ahead and create a great pattern library that you can use when you can when you're designing or that when you can use that knowledge when you're designing a design system for any organization, so on and so forth. So your product is basically more than just a pile of reusable UI elements. It has a structure and it has a meaning. It's not a generic web page. It's the embodiment of a system of concepts. So we will definitely cover some of these ideas as we're going through the course. We may not necessarily cover all of them in depth, but we'll definitely have a look at them. So <clears throat> what are some of the things that we'll cover in this design system course? So we'll cover the foundations, what the colors are, we'll follow, we'll, we'll think about some of the ideas, why we chose, why we choose a particular color scheme, but primarily what we're doing here or what I'm trying to do here is inform you how to go about choosing your colors, what type of colors you should choose, uh, how many variants for those colors you should create, so on and so forth, what are the accent colors, whatever it is, or some of the secondary colors, some of the primary colors, that's going to be the detail in how to actually create the typography styles, then the spacing, then the icons. And then we're going to cover the components, for example, button cards, checkboxes, chips, data tables, data pickers, so on and so forth. If there are anything particularly missing in the components that you would like to see in this course, definitely let me know. And I can consider that adding in this list and then obviously creating a video about it. We're going to cover all of these things in a video step by step, like just a single video for color, single video for typography, single video for each particular component, so on and so forth. Things we will not cover, unfortunately, in this course, but which are crucial. So obviously the design philosophy, um, the principles behind the components that we're creating, the colors that we're choosing, so on and so forth, the guidelines that we're following. So we will follow some guidelines, obviously, because we would define what the spacing are uh, and follow a certain methodology when we're creating uh, the components, but obviously not in the depth at which design systems are supposed to cover all of these things. We'll not cover sounds, we'll not cover gestures, we'll not cover the technical documentation as to, for example, the handoff documentation. We may do this if there's a lot of requirement from you guys to actually go ahead and create the technical documentation or the detailed design documentation of all these components that we're creating so it's easy for handoff. So if there's a lot of interest in that, let me know and I can consider adding that to the course. But we, how would we go about creating a design system? Well, we'll follow Brad Frost atomic design methodology principles. So we will start with atoms. Then we'll go from atoms to molecules, from molecules to organisms, from templates, uh, from organisms to templates, and then from templates to pages. Uh, 
but particularly for the design system, since we wouldn't necessarily be creating a lot of pages or a lot of templates on and so forth, we have to focus on two things. And those two things are atoms, molecules, or three things, atoms, molecules, and organisms. So when we're talking about atoms, what do we exactly mean here? Well, imagine you have an input field and an input field has a label, an input field has a placeholder, an input field has an icon on the left, so on and so forth, right? Or a button may have, let's say, an icon on the left, an icon on the right, and then a label in the middle. So the icon themselves would be the atoms. We first have to design the atom, and then we would obviously go ahead and design the base structure of the component that can be considered the molecule, and then designing the whole thing, right? For that particular component, that can be considered an organism. So basically what we're saying here, and it may not necessarily correlate to a Brad Frost atomics design, uh, completely uh, on the dot but what we're saying here is we will create components that are a, a culmination or a collection of other smaller components or other smaller patterns atoms and molecules that we design so it's much easier to actually switch to swap components to swap things here and there so on and so forth rather than creating a single la layer of components which is much harder to actually swap or navigate around and all of this is going to be covered in this course if there's anything that i'm missing in this course that you guys would really like to see definitely let me know this is the time and yeah i think that's pretty much it i will start with the foundations and i will probably cover either the colors or the typography first because obviously those are going to be ones that we're going to be using when we are even creating assets for this design system. So definitely let me know if there's anything missing in here which you would like to see. But other than that, I'll see you hopefully in the colors video or the typography video pretty much soon. So do subscribe, do hit the bell icon and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.